If you guys were paying attention to 2021, then you would know that data engineering jobs are on the rise. Perhaps you saw Jay Feng's great article that he put out last year where he looked at 10,000 different interviews in the data space and found that data engineering jobs, or at least data engineering interviews, were on the increase of at least 40%. And of course, the massive increase in terms of funding in the whole data engineering space, as well as just, in my opinion, the explosion of data engineering content has kind of led to a revival of the term data engineering. Also, I have seen an increase in the overall amount of companies that are offering data engineering internships. Of course, you can find things like Amazon and Facebook, but there's also companies like Spotify and other companies that are also offering uh, internships in the data engineering space. The question becomes, how would I become a data engineer again in 2022? In this video, I'm going to answer that question by going over a few different sections. In particular, I'm going to just discuss the skills I would learn, the ways I would apply and kind of what jobs I would look for, as well as how I would stand out. Because I think more importantly than anything else, it's about standing out in this modern era where everyone wants these positions because they pay really well. So the key is standing out when everyone else is just sending in their resumes. So let's first talk about some of these skills that I would learn by looking at some of these job descriptions that these companies are looking for. Let's first pop open Amazon's. Now looking at Amazon's basic qualifications, they expect that you have a bachelor's degree, which makes sense, as well as knowing things like Python, uh, how to create data pipelines, as well as kind of some database and data warehouse modeling concepts. And I think that all makes sense. This is stuff I've always harped on. You should really understand the basics in terms of Python, SQL, and data modeling and ETL development. Those three things are generally on all interviews. Scratch that. One important asterisk is of course for coding, you can know Python, Java, uh, Scala as well. Um, I think Zach has a great video that I'll try to put up a link here. Um, either before or after this video ends where he discusses kind of the value of Scala. But I think one of those three languages is usually useful because if you know Python and then one of the other two, you can usually kind of figure out the last one. I will say if I scroll down to the preferred qualifications, there are some questionable statements here, like a master's degree seems unnecessary for any sort of like computer engineering, software engineering, data engineering job. You know, in general, uh, I think a lot of what you're gonna learn is not gonna be in school for these positions. Like there's not exactly a data engineering uh, master's degree. So I think this is silly for Amazon to include. Also, if you wanna talk about a bullet point that makes me a little bit skeptical or frustrated maybe is a better word. The fact that they call out can articulate the basic difference between data types and they reference JSON, NoSQL and relational. Um, I don't know what they're going for here because two of those things kind of connect, like you can see NoSQL and relational, but JSON is so kind of out there. I guess it's its own thing. Yeah, I, I think the statement in general doesn't make sense, but I, I get what they're kind of saying, but overall I wish this was phrased better. It should have just been something like, understands the difference between SQL and NoSQL or something similar to that, because this just seems a little confusing. Obviously they kind of repeat the need to understand things like normalization and modeling, which makes sense. These are definite skills you will need. Um, I've done the uh, Amazon interview. You will need a lot of SQL and kind of data modeling experience. Those are kind of the key things for data engineers um, in general. And this kind of repeats itself on the Facebook data engineering internships, where you'll see again, a need for SQL, Python. They also kind of call out the need to like understand distributed systems, which I find comical. Like they reference that you should understand Hive and Presto. This is kind of silly because as someone who worked at Facebook or Meta, here's the thing guys, all of that stuff is very abstracted away. You don't actually need to understand how it works under the hood. You're just honestly writing SQL. You don't need to understand how Presto and Hive work, nor are you gonna be writing any MapReduce jobs. I just wanna take that uh, hope out of, out of your sales really quickly because you're just gonna be writing SQL. So it's a little funny that they reference that. There's no need to really know that low level information. But as you can see, the key areas you need to focus on in terms of studying to get a data engineering job in 2022 is SQL, some coding language and data modeling. Like those are kind of the core three there's obviously a little bit you should know about like distributed processing as well as possibly streaming, but I think these three are the core areas and most companies shouldn't expect you to know too much more if you're going into an internship. If you're going into more of a mid-level uh, position, there might be some expectation there to know a little bit more, but overall, I think these are kind of the three core areas that out of school, 
is fair game that you should have some knowledge of. All of this information exists. Again, if you wanna learn something like SQL, there are plenty of channels and plenty of videos where people go over how to understand SQL interviews. Nate from Strata Scratch puts out a lot of great videos. Uh, Tina Huang has a few, I think uh, Interview Query has a few of their own. So there's plenty of opportunities to study SQL. Uh, Python in itself, you know, you need to know some data structures and algorithms, of course. Um, also have some experience kind of implementing things operationally. So build some of your own examples in terms of like writing Python code, use things like dictionaries and arrays and do a lot of simple things like that and get comfortable with it. Again, another asterisk, if you see a job description that requires you to know something like Java and Scala, make sure you focus on those more than Python because they'll likely have some concepts there that will lean heavily towards Scala and Java and a little bit away from Python. So again, it just depends on the company. If you're doing uh, Facebook, I recommend Python. It's just so much faster uh, to write a lot of those uh, solutions. Uh, other companies like I think Netflix and Airbnb are a little bit maybe more uh, away from Python, but that would be a great question to ask Zach. And finally, for data modeling, you can't go wrong with Kimball's book for data modeling or Udemy's course for basic data warehousing. At the end of the day, this is generally what interviewers expect. Um, usually they'll ask you to model something like maybe some college with like courses and professors and, and students and their grades, or they might ask for something like, you know, model DoorDash and something like that, where you've got like an orders table and things of that nature. You're not expected to have a perfect data warehouse design, but you should kind of at least get the core concepts. You know, what is a fact table, some dimensional tables and things of that nature. The truth is at Facebook, we didn't even 100% rely on this data model, but we did expect you to know it for your data interview. So it's just one of those things where companies might model their data differently internally, but it's a great way, at least, you know, using kind of the classic model of fact tables with dimensions to see if people understand how to model data. Okay, so now you've studied those three core areas. Again, this is more for people just trying to break into data engineering. You've got those three core areas, code, SQL, and data modeling. Also some ETL design. I kind of clumped those together, even though they are different. So you've got those three ready, perfect. Great, well now it's time for you to apply and deal with the trauma we all know as technical interviews. Emotional damage. If you're willing to go through the emotional damage that is and interview and succeed. Here are some of the positions you can look for. There are tons of junior data engineer positions that I found just Googling it. Way more than uh, I ever saw when I was first going into data engineering. So there are tons of opportunities here. I will point out that some companies don't seem to understand the term junior at all. And I don't wanna sound like, uh, you know, Joshua Fluke, but for example, this company for some reason expects you to have two plus years of experience for a junior data engineer position. And I'm just stuck here questioning like, do you understand what the word junior means? Also the same thing could be said here for this IBM position where they're expecting two years of coding experience with Java, one year for Scala, another like year of Kafka. Like there's just way too much experience here for a junior data position. Guys, a junior data position or any junior position means zero to, you know, two years. After that, you start pushing for that mid-level position you know, three to six years, somewhere in that range. So this is a little silly, but there are plenty of other junior data engineering positions here. So you can ignore this IBM one and find one that is more reasonable for looking for people who are out of college and are junior, or, you know, again, beginning their career, not someone that already is borderline going on mid-level. I hope at least that they pay well, because if you looked at the Amazon internship position, it was paying $7,700 per month if you lived in Colorado. That's almost the equivalent of six figures. So this IBM position for a junior position better be paying $100,000. I know it's in uh, apparently Louisiana, but I'm just saying it better be paying close to 80 to $100,000. Otherwise, check yourself IBM. Amazon's over here paying almost six figures for an intern and their profit margins are probably much thinner than yours. But don't fret guys, I did find a position for Anheuser-Busch that seems a little more reasonable. They expect you to have some snowflake experience which that might be a little bit difficult if you haven't worked at a company, but I'm sure you can kind of get around that. Also, Boz Allen Hamilton, which I've actually never realized how you pronounce Boz. Is it Boz? Uh, also has a position open for a junior data engineer 
with just one year of experience expectations. And that's, I think, a little more reasonable. I can understand at least, you know, wanting someone to have at least a year of experience. I don't know where you expect them to get it because this is a junior position, but I think it's at least something that makes sense. Also, some of the skills underneath that also make a lot of sense, you know, making sure you know how to build pipelines and things of that nature. All, I think, are a reasonable ask. So there's plenty of reasonable junior data engineer positions that you can apply for. This is again, very different than when I recall going to be a data engineer. There wasn't a lot of internships. There wasn't a lot of uh, junior positions. So in terms of applying, you guys have lots of options. The tricky thing here is again, there are lots of options, but there are a lot more people that want to become a data engineer. If you saw this junior data engineer position was offering somewhere in the range in theory, of 80 to 100K. And in the US, I think it's only about 10% of people make about 100K. So you're already breaking almost the top 10%. And you're only what, 22 coming out of college? So you're doing great, but how do you stand out? This is the third kind of step in becoming a data engineer in 2022. You need to stand out because everyone wants one of these coveted data jobs, whether it's data science, data engineer, or something similar they all offer upwards of six figure salaries. I mean, you could arguably make maybe even more if you get in some sort of startup that has a decent stock that will just continue to grow. So these jobs are very valuable and you need to stand out. And that's gonna be this final section, which we're gonna talk about standing out. Again, you've got the skills, you've applied for the jobs, and those are two things you can do. Again, referrals are also great, but now you need to actually stand out. How do you do that in 2022? Honestly, it's probably both easier and harder than ever. First of all, there's plenty of different platforms that you can write articles, make videos, and just put out your content. Whether it's something like LinkedIn, and you can kind of share what you're learning or working on, Medium in terms of like writing or maybe creating your own blog. You can put together some sort of GitHub repository where you start sharing both content and your code, as well as putting together videos of what you're working on. And these are just a few ways you can stand out because it starts getting people to actually know you as a person and not just as some sort of resume that's gonna come across someone's desk. And each of these kind of methods might be better suited for different people. Some people are really good at like either creating their own projects, maybe doing some open source work and writing code. And that's just what they're like energized by, right? Like they love just writing code in every way possible. They wanna like write code for open source projects. They like build their own project technically, but not everyone loves doing this all the time. And so for those people who maybe don't like coding as much, you can work on understanding some more high level concepts and writing blogs. This might be involving you understanding data modeling and writing even a basic data modeling kind of breakdown. Like what are the different tables in a data warehouse or comparing like modern concepts like, you know, data mesh, data fabric and data warehouse. And like, what do all of these terms mean? And why are people kind of trying these other options out? All of this takes a lot of thought in terms of like why we do what we do as data engineers and will force you to start designing things like data warehouses, in turn, preparing you for interviews, but also provide you a piece of content to share with possible interviewers. And finally, places like YouTube are great because you can share a lot of your experiences to an audience of an borderline, what feels like infinite amount of people. I can tell you I've had hiring managers reach out to me because of the videos that I put out because there's not a lot of people putting out videos in the data engineering space. So put together that video of how you studied for your data engineering interviews, whether you have them or not, just put together your study guide and share it with other people. Or if you did some sort of project that involved something that's data engineering like, share it, write an article, because that's how people find you. A super valuable skill that you can all learn, and I'm still learning, is how to sell the value that you provide. It's the whole adage of if a tree falls in a forest, but no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? You out there could be the smartest future data engineer possible. But if you don't know how to make noise and show the fact that you are smart, the truth is you don't exist. And that's my final point here for you guys. If you really wanna stand out in 2022 and you're trying to get that first data engineering position, Yes, you can study all you want. Yes, you can apply all you want. And maybe you'll get lucky because you have a referral and you know someone because you've networked like crazy. And those are all viable options. But I think what's great for all of you, regardless of your skill level or if you're comfortable, is the push to create content. 
is the push to kind of share yourself out there in the world in a way that you feel comfortable. Again, it could be writing, it could be video, it could just be through your various GitHub repositories. Because apparently, if you didn't know, companies are getting funded like crazy because of the amount of stars they have on their repos. So don't feel limited to the normal forms of getting noticed. You will need a combination of probably networking as well as selling yourself to really stand out in 2022. These jobs, especially for data engineering, are offering nearly six figure salaries in some places. And if you wanna compete for that salary, you're going to have to stand out. With that guys, I wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you so you can understand how you can possibly get a data engineering job in 2022. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will see you guys next time and goodbye.